In this tutorial, I will discuss carrier frequencies, bandwidths, Etsy subbands, dwell time, and hop time. As mentioned before, LoRaWAN uses frequencies in the ISM band. On the Things Network website, you can find the carrier frequencies for your country. First, find the frequency plan which applies to your country. Go to this web page. This web page. For example, I live in the Netherlands, I select the letter N. As you can see, the Netherlands uses this frequency plan, AU 863 to 870 megahertz. I now know the frequency plan. Select this link, Overview. And here you can find the frequency plans. And here are other frequency plans. Here are the upload frequencies. And here are the download frequencies. Instead of using the Things Network website, check out the LoRaWAN Regional Parameters document issued by the LoRa Alliance. Go to this web page, this web page, and here you can download the LoRaWAN Regional Parameters document. This is the LoRaWAN Regional Parameters document. And here you can find the regional parameters for different ISM bands. For example, here is the AU863 to 870 MHz ISM band, the US902 to 928 MHz ISM band, etc. This document contains the approved frequency channel plans for various global regions and follows the established regulatory constraints in those regions. In this video, I'm only focusing on the AU863 to 870 ISM band. For other ISM bands, please consult the LoRaWAN regional parameters document. In this table, you will find the LoRaWAN frequencies used in Europe, for example, in the Netherlands. These uplink frequencies matches the Things Network frequency plan AU 863 to 870 megahertz. Channel 0 uses this uplink frequency, channel 1 uses this uplink frequency, channel 2 uses this uplink frequency, etc. And for each uplink frequency, there is a corresponding spreading factor and bandwidth range, as you can see over here. I will explain spreading factors in another video. For example, this frequency uses the 125 kHz bandwidth. This frequency uses the 125 kHz bandwidth and also the 250 kHz bandwidth. All the other frequencies uses the 125 kHz bandwidth. And in this table, you will find the download frequencies. The download frequencies is the same as the upload frequencies for slot 1 and an additional download frequency to be used for slot 2. To recap, for upload links, there are 8 channels to use. For down links, the same 8 channels are used for receive slot 1 and 1 channel for receive slot 2. The receive slots are explained in tutorial 4, LoRaWAN device classes. If your country uses the AU863 to 870 ISM band, then according to the LoRaWAN regional parameters document, every AU868 MHz end device must implement the following default channels. 868.1 MHz, 868.3 MHz, and 868.5 MHz, all three uses the 125 kHz bandwidth and additional five frequencies. The other five frequencies can be freely attributed by the network operator. For example, the Things Network implemented the following frequencies 867.1, 867.3, 867.5, 867.7, and 867.9. Earlier, the word channel is used. A channel is just an agreed-upon set of specific frequencies with additional information included in the agreement. For example, when using the Things Network frequency plan AU863-870, to the uplink channel 3 refers to carry frequency 867.1 MHz and spreading factor 7 to 12 and all using the 125 kHz bandwidth. The LoRaWAN regional parameters used by the Things Network can also be found at this GitHub page. This GitHub page. 
if you open this JSON file, for example, channel zero uses this frequency and this bandwidth and uses all spreading factors. Channel one uses this frequency using this bandwidth using all spreading factors, etc. In this picture, you see the LoRaWAN frequencies used in Europe based on the Things Network frequency plan AU863-870. Here are the eight upload frequencies and here are the eight download frequencies to be used for slot one and an additional download frequency for slot two. The orange and blue colors represents the 125 kHz bandwidth and the green color represents the 250 kHz bandwidth. As you can see, the 250 kHz bandwidth is only used at this frequency. All frequencies uses the 125 kHz bandwidth. Etsy divides the 863 to 870 MHz band into five subbands named G, G1, G2, G3, and G4. Each subband has different constraints in terms of EIRP, duty cycle, and channel bandwidth. For example, subband G1 represents this frequency band, and these are the limitations which are applied on this subband. In this picture, the subbands are mapped on the Things Network AU863 to 870 frequency plan. For example, subband G1, the EIRP is limited to 25 milliwatts and the duty cycle is 1%. These limitations apply to these three frequencies. LoRaWAN only uses the following bandwidth ranges, 125 kHz, 250 kHz, and 500 kilohertz. Which of these three ranges are actually used depends on the region or frequency plan. For example, in Europe only the bandwidths 125 kilohertz and 250 kilohertz are used. The relationship between bandwidth and carrier frequency can be seen in the figure below. For example, if the carrier frequency is 867.1 MHz, for example, this is the carrier frequency, and for example, the bandwidth is 125 kHz, then the lowest frequency and the highest frequency can be calculated as follow. The lowest frequency is the carrier frequency minus the bandwidth divided by 2 equals this lowest frequency, and the highest frequency is the carrier frequency plus the bandwidth divided by 2 is this highest frequency. In this picture, you see the LoRaWAN frequency used in Europe based on the Things Network Frequency Plan AU863-870. Here are the uplink frequencies with corresponding bandwidths. These are actual LoRa transmitted signals. This is a LoRa transmitted signal using the 125 kHz bandwidth. And this is the LoRa transmitted signal using the 250 kHz bandwidth. An end device changes channel in a pseudo-random fashion for every transmission. Changing frequencies makes the system more robust to interferences. For example, in Europe, for uplink transmissions, eight different frequencies are used, as explained earlier. Let's assume this blue color block represents a 15 bytes message, and this red color block represents an 8 bytes message. For example, this message is first transmitted at this frequency. Then after, let's say, one minute, it transmits another message at this frequency. Then again, after a minute, it transmits this message at this frequency. And then again, it transmits this message at this frequency. As you can see, after every transmission, it hops to another frequency. Dwell time or transmit time is the amount of time needed to transmit on a frequency. So in this example, the dwell time is 3 milliseconds. Hop time is the amount of time needed to change from one frequency to another in which the radio is not transmitting. After this message is transmitted, it takes 1 milliseconds to hop to another frequency.
Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. If you have questions, leave your comments below. I'll do my best to answer them.